Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shi Jun Wang. In today's video, I am going to continue talking about the Brahms Paganini variation. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about the first half of book two. Um, when I compared these two books, because I learned book one uh, about two years ago, and then during the pandemic, I started to um, complete this set by uh, finishing the second book. Um, and I have similar feelings uh, as those uh, Chopin etude sets. Um, I think book one is harder, uh, in a way, much harder than book two. And then the same with Opus 10, I think it's harder than Opus 25. Um, and maybe people will agree with me, but maybe I will feel completely different if I learn them in a reversed way. Because by learning the first 12 etudes, you've already strengthened your technique. And of course, uh, when you learn another 12, you feel they're probably easier. And the same thing um, goes with the second book. Um, well, to, to, be, to begin with, um, there is no more uh, glosando on the octave, so that was a big relief. And, um, but there are actually one variation, variation number seven, which I'm going to talk about at the very end of this video, that it has a very bizarre and um, very unique uh, rhythmic pattern, three or four, four against nine. That is something I've never seen before uh, learning this piece. So I'm going to talk about the solutions there also. Um, variation one, um, well, of course we have to automatically uh, compare this with the variation one of book one. Because one is being double six, and then this is being double third. Um, which one is harder? Um, I think they're probably similar. Maybe book one is a little bit trickier because if you um, watch the other video, because it requires us to divide, to divide the phrasing, technical phrasing from the second note. So instead of playing like this way, backhand, we have to play with a comfortable position from the second note. But here, uh, we automatically start with the first note and group them into three notes each. So it sounds like... And why is that? I think Brahms himself put on the fingering. So he put down every three notes. are from uh, himself so he's really just telling us you should group this into three note per hand position um, and here in measure nine right hand um, from uh, octave playing now is broken octave so instead of it's and that really um, it's a very, very good training for, for us to be more patient um, when we play broken octaves. Because what happens is that we want to change the hand position too early. That messes up this octave frame that we have. So we have to really practice changing the octave hand position after we've successfully completed the last note. Otherwise, we lose our octave shape. Um, and then um, in major 17, the technique changed again. Now, both hands are involved with these running triplets. Um, here, um, if we continue to, to group our technique from the first note, I think it's, it's very difficult for a couple of reasons. One, um, 
we have to switch our uh, direction and also to play single notes after a octave a chord um, somehow it's, it's hard so if we do I would break from the second note again so I will think of the octave as the last note of each group and somehow that made my hands less confused when I uh, compare to compare to this it also gives the technique more flexibility because at the end they are non legatos so we feel free to break um, the patterns um, variation two um, really reminds me this left hand pattern with such a wide open chord reminded me of many of the chamber works I play uh, performed um, by, by uh, Brahms and, and he really explored all kind of genre and media um, we have uh, sonatas with violin, with cello, with clarinet, we have piano trio, quintet, quartet, um, and, and with, of course, leader. Um, and uh, I think if you've played the Brahms chamber uh, work and performed it, um, you will probably have similar feelings is that you realize that you're actually not ready, but you realized it on the stage. And why is that? I think the main cause is really because of this um, such wide stretched open chords that you need actually to see them uh, on the keyboard uh, but of course you have other melodies and you have to listen to your partner playing so that makes it uh, very very difficult so i guess unless you have it all memorized when you play brahms uh, chamber works you never feel ready you never feel secure um, and but here, since we've figured out um, the different uh, positions of chords, we can also actually see the hint by Brahms. The beginning, when the, the chords are so wide, I think it has greater intensity. <laughs> position and then it's wider again so somehow by changing the positions of each chords it also changes the intensity level um, Variation three is really a difficult one. It's a very good exercise for changing articulations. And this is not just for left hand or, left or right hand. It's both hands together. And often when left hand is doing this uh, uh, staccato, right hand has the three note slur. But then with a one staccato, staccato uh, octave in the middle. So we have to really control every note and know very very clearly how to play and how Brahms articulated each note. Variation 4 really is my favorite of the whole set probably um, and it's really revolutionary. Um, we all know the famous Rachmaninoff uh, Rhapsody on the theme of a Paganini. Um, so he flipped <laughs> flipped this and of course he also changed it from minor to major so instead of and this really uh, 
uh, touching um, expressive melody. But I think here we got a hint by Brahms. Because instead of going up, he put down and made a, a mirror image. Make it so spacious between these, and then suddenly, Dolce, and for Brahms, Dolce really means more introvert. So within this simple 16 measures we have really so many different levels of emotion um, variation five um, within each three note groups super easy but when we play them very fast and then continuous without any gaps it takes a lot of practice to, to play them very, very securely. And, and this is why, because not only you have to learn how to change from one position to another position, you have to be able to find the position very, very quickly. Um, and we talked about how important hand positions are. And it's really 10 times harder when you have to move the hand positions. And think about this. Um, sometimes when you shoot targets, uh, you shoot a moving target, um, it's harder than when you're shooting a stilled target. But considering this, when you play this variation, it's almost like you are driving or you're on a car because yourself is also moving. And then you're trying to shoot a moving target while you're also moving. So that's how hard this is. So really, it, you need to really move quickly and you need to be patient not to change your hand position until you finish the last note. And then you have to change it so quickly. Um, but eventually, I think this is um, doable. It's nothing uh, too hard. Um, Variation six probably is the simplest one. It sounds harder actually. But right hand really has nothing more than has just it's a, a arpeggios that everyone plays. There's not even any fancy version of arpeggio. It's just normal arpeggio. And then left has these uh, grace notes. Um, and of course, it's just only a collaboration between the two hands. So as long as we feel the beat and then we get the timing right, and this should be a, a pretty easy one to learn. Number seven is so special and it took me a while to figure out. Um, I've never in my life seen anything uh, four against nine. Because right hand has four notes, left hand has nine. Poor measure. And, and I spent a, a lot of time trying to play four against three. And then I changed the three into nine. becomes eight against nine. Again, the core rhythmic value really comes from four against three. So if we have that learned, 
And then, of course, we have to learn this wide stretch. It's almost like uh, for the left hand, but then the wrong way. Uh, uh, really, uh, this takes a while to learn. But then once you get the rhythm uh, and then you get the wide stretched uh, roll chord, a pivot middle note um, that's how you find the hand positions um, this should be okay if you practice this diligently uh, for a long period of time um, thank you for watching this episode uh, next week I am going to wrap up and finish this whole series um, and hopefully to move on with some new repertoire thank you for watching see you next